In this video, we're going to look at one example of lateral inhibition and its ability to enhance contrast in sensory perception. So in this example, we're taking our finger and we're inserting it into some hot water, right? Shown here on the left of this dashed line. And of course, that means we're going to have increased input stimulation of thermoreceptors in the skin uh, that are submer is this submerged in that hot water. And of course, we're going to get increased output of those thermoreceptors onto uh, secondary neurons, and off we go to the central nervous system to tell us that we have uh, uh, experiencing a warmer temperature there, and we're going to do that by having a higher action potential frequency. Now, as this thermoreceptor is stimulated, it's going to synapse with interneurons, which are innervating adjacent uh, secondary neurons over here in the in the region of the finger that is not submerged. And what that means is that we're going to in, actually inhibit, right? There, there are thermoreceptors over here that may have some level of activity. But what we're going to do is we're going to inhibit that level of activity, right? We're going to we're going to make sure that it does not fire action potentials shown here. And what this does is if we look at the responsiveness of these receptors, uh, at that junction uh, between the water and air interface is that where we're in the water, we have a strong stimulus, but where we're in air, we don't have just less stimulus. We have reduced stimulus, right? We get this inhibition, right? We get a depression of normal output of those receptors because of this lateral inhibition that's going on here. And what this does is it's giving us uh, enhanced sense of contrast at that water-air interface. It's telling us where that stimulus is occurring on our skin, right? Again, by generating a larger difference than would normally occur without lateral inhibition between those two areas. This is also uh, a common feature of neuronal um, activity in the retina of the eye where we need to have good contrast between where light is hitting and where light is not hitting our eye. And, and that occurs specifically in uh, receptor cells called cones um, at the, at the, and the visual axis of the eye, where we need very strong uh, contrast in the, uh, where light is hitting and where it isn't so that we can see distinct outlines of, of structures.